We are starting a brand new sermon series today called Lit. Now, if you, it's a good way to invite your friends, especially people that uh, um, maybe don't know Christ, that are in the world. Just say, hey, come to Soul Quest Church this month. We, you're going to get lit. We're a different kind of church, but you know what I'm saying. With the Holy God. Holy Ghost and the Holy God. But it's going to be a fun time, and we're going to be really centering everything that we preach this entire series out of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. In a few moments, I'm going to read that, verses 2 through 6. And then also, we're going to be in John chapter 8 today, and verse 12, where it talks about Jesus being the light of the world. And um, so we're going to kind of use that as a platform for this entire series. Now, I'm really excited about today's message because... Today we are going to be looking specifically at the subject, burn, baby, burn. Somebody say it with me. Burn, baby, burn. Come on, say it out loud. Burn, baby, burn. That's right. So we're going to be looking at that today. So lit, what does it mean? How do we define the word lit? Well, if you look it up, it's a verb, past and past participle of light. It also is an adjective, illuminated, having been ignited or burning, and, of course, you know the urban definitions, right? That is turned up, popping, exciting, amazing, excellent. There's another definition of the word lit. Mildly intoxicated. Now, hang on, listen to this. Mildly intoxicated. Often used in the 1940s and the 1950s by blues and jazz musicians to describe... Now get get this, to describe the sweet spot in which someone was drunk enough to be relaxed and play better without being completely wasted, suffering from motor skill impairment. That means to be lit. And then, then there's another one, to be lit just means to be completely wasted, drunk. Out of your mind. Well, you say, what in the world does that have to do with Christmas? And what does that have to do with me? Well, what we're going to do in this sermon series is, as we look in this series, we're going to explore many of these meanings of the word lit as it relates to the Christmas story. So I'm really, really excited about that. Now, if you look in the Bible, you're going to discover that there are a minimum of about 45 times in the Word of God, Old and New Testament, not necessarily the word lit is used, but the word burning or fire is used. Now, the Bible says fire is used in the Old Testament in animal sacrifices by the Israelites as they worship their God. God used fire to lead the children of Israel through the desert when they were in between Egypt and the Promised Land. The Lord descended on Mount Sinai in fire, and the whole mountain shook. It was lit. Fire is also mentioned as God's ultimate judgment, which leads to a place called hell, Matthew 25 and verse 4. In Hebrews 12, verse 28 and 29, the Bible says that God is a consuming fire because He is all-powerful, He is all-present, and He is all-knowing. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean that God is out to get us or to hurt us, but what it means is he cleanses us and God purifies us and God frees us with this fire. When then Luke chapter 3 and verse 16, we're going to look at that in one of our points as we close out this message today. But fire is a significant aspect of God's presence in the life of his children. And then in James chapter 3 and verse 5, the Bible says that the tongue, the tongue can be like a fire. Do you know your tongue can be lit? Good or bad, but it could be a fire. So we're going to examine every aspect of this word lit as we think about the Christmas story and how it applies. Now, Our text for this entire series is, first of all, in Isaiah chapter 9. I want to read to you Isaiah 9, and I want to read verses 2 
down through verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 through 6, the Bible says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great what? The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Verse 3. Next verse. You got that? All right. There it is. All right. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the, the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that, the bur- that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Verse 5. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Now if we jump into the New Testament And we go over to John chapter 8 and verse 12. The Bible says this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Jesus Christ came into this dark, sinful world To illuminate it. Jesus Christ has come into our dark lives to illuminate our lives, to bring light into our beings, to give us light so that we can be lit. Now, as I was thinking about this subject, it reminds me of three songs that have been out there. The first one, let me just stop and ask you, how many disco people do we have in the house? Any disco people? One. No disco. No people like disco in the house. None of y'all. How many don't even know what disco is? Man, you guys are so young. Today we kick it off this series with with the, the, the title, Burn Baby Burn. Now, this may remind you, number one of 1976, who was alive in 1976? Raise your hand. All right, a few of you were. Okay. So let me again ask you, how many of you remember the song, Burn, Baby, Burn, Disco Inferno by the Tramps? Anybody remember that song? There we go. We're getting somewhere now. Burn, baby, burn. Y'all remember that song? Disco in fire. Y'all remember that? I mean, you know, I know, man, I was nine years of age, and I was running around the house singing, burn, baby, burn. Nobody else did that. All right, thank you. And then there was another burn, baby, burn that came out in 2001 by a kind of unknown group by the name of Ash. They were a northern Irish band, burn, baby, burn. And then for those of you that are very spiritual, a few years ago, Burn Baby Burn, another version by Mercy Me. Anybody remember that one? Yeah, it wasn't a very big hit, was it? But today I want to take this title. And I want us to see how it relates and how it describes you and me. Did you know that right now in this building there's only three, really three kinds of people? There's only three kinds of people in this building right now. There's only three people that will watch, three kinds of people, those are people that watch online later. There's only three different kinds of people in this place right now. And you are all, we are all characterized by one of these three things. Number one, a lighter. How many got one in your pocket? You don't have to raise your hand. Number two, I've always wanted to play with one of these in church. 
Anybody got any nose hairs? Come up here. Whoa, they turned off. And number three. I didn't even know you could still buy these. This is the exciting place, amen. Y'all got these in your bathroom? Oh, I don't know why I'm going there. But anyway, every one of us, we are characterized by one of these three things. And so I thought this was going to be a different, kind of a different, interesting sermon maybe today. I want to talk about these three as they relate to who we are and where we're going and what we're doing in our lives. Number one, the lighter. Everybody look at it with me. The lighter. I hope the fire alarm doesn't go off today. But if it does, you can just tell all your friends that this place is on fire. All right. Are y'all awake today? All right. Number one, the lighter. What does that mean? Well, the, the lighter, the heat is hot. The flame is up. Here's what's very interesting that I discovered, and I, I'm not a very bright guy, but I have a little bit of common sense. I would have assumed that the blaze or the fire in this, it comes out blue. I just thought that blue flame was hotter than a yellow flame, or, but I, I thought that th this would be a lot hotter than this. And I thought, well, that's going to mess up my, my illustration because when I Googled it and I read about it, Basically, the flame in this little Bic lighter is just as hot, 3,500 to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just as hot as the flame coming out of this. It's a butane lighter. The heat is hot, 3,500, 4,000 degrees. Little force behind it, though. Little force. And when it's lit, it's easily Blown out. It's easily blown out. What does this lighter stand for? It stands for a Christian. Watch this, watch this, watch this. It stands for a Christ follower who allows, watch this, allows circumstances in his or her life, temptations in his or her life, outside forces in our lives, to extinguish the flame in our lives. Now, I'm not saying that, that you can lose your salvation. That's not what I'm telling you. Because the source of the flame is still inside, right? The gas, the butane, it's still inside of the canister. If you're a child of God, listen to me. If you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you, and he said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. You can try to fake him out, but the Holy Ghost goes where you go. But sometimes we allow, watch this, the external things of this life, temptations, circumstances, the valley of the shadow of death to blow out the flame in our lives. Now, I was thinking about that, and there's somebody that comes to my mind in the New Testament, and his name is Peter. Now, I'm not talking about the Peter after the resurrection. I'm talking about the Peter before the resurrection. Because Peter, after the resurrection, he was not a lighter, he was a torch. But before the resurrection, he was a lighter. He messed up very often. He got blown out a lot. He made a lot of d dumb decisions. He fell away from God from time to time. And every single one of us in our life, we have been a lighter, if we're children of God, and we have been a torch. And the question that I'm going to ask you today is, which one are you? Are you a lighter? And the fact that you are allowing the things of this world to dim you, to blow out your fire, or are you a torch that nobody can blow out? You see, Peter, Peter was a lighter. What do you mean? Well, let me give you several things I want you to look at real quick. Three things. Number one, when it comes to Peter, Peter followed Jesus at a distance. 
Peter followed Jesus at a distance. The Bible says in Mark chapter 14 and verse 53, Mark 14, 53, they took Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the teachers of the law came together. Is that, I think I gave you the wrong verse. Is there another one? If you read on, what you're going to discover is that Jesus went to the high priest, but Peter followed at a distance. Peter did not stay close to Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want your fire to go out, then follow Jesus at a distance. If you want your fire to go out, follow Jesus at a distance. Listen, friend, we don't need to stay that far away from Jesus. Wherever Jesus goes, we need to be right there with him. Draw near to him, and the Bible says he will draw near to us. We need to stay close to Jesus. How do we do that? We stay close to Jesus by his word. We stay close to Jesus by being in his, his church on a faithful basis. We, we stay close to Jesus by spending time in prayer with him. Listen, Peter followed Jesus at a distance. Number two, he ran with the wrong crowd. He ran with the wrong crowd. John 18 and verse 18, the Bible says it was cold and the servants of the officials stood around a fire and they had, made, they had made to keep them warm. And Peter also was standing with them warming himself. Now watch this, watch this. The next verse says this, Luke 22 and verse 55. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. What's the point? These were people that were enemies of Christ. And Peter sits down and hangs out with the wrong crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You want your life to go out. I've seen this time and time and time and time again. People give their life to Christ and man, they are ignited and they are on fire for God, but then they just keep running with the wrong crowd. And all of a sudden, it happens and it happens and it happens every single time. I'm not saying not to be friends with lost people. That's not what we're saying at all. But what we are saying is your best friends, the ones that you run with day in and day out and every weekend, they ought to be other people that are also in love with with Jesus. You see, Peter ran with the wrong crowd. But then number three, not only did he run with the wrong crowd, but he had a sleepy prayer life. He had a sleepy prayer life. Luke twenty two forty 40 and 45. Luke twenty two forty 40 and 45. On reaching the place, he said to them, going to the Garden of Gethsemane, pray. Everybody say pray. Pray that you will not fall into temptation. Verse 45, watch this. When he rose from prayer and he went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. You want your little light to be blown out? Don't pray. Don't have a prayer life. Don't spend time with God. Don't communicate with him. Don't talk to him. Oh, friend, when you don't do that, and that's where your power comes from. That's where your strength comes from. That's, that's where, listen to me, that's where the strength to live the Christian life and to say no to temptation and rise above the circumstances, it comes from this intimate relationship with God. And the way that you have that is you stay close to God and you don't run with people that hate God and they don't live for Jesus. Listen, you've got to stay close to God and spend time in prayer with Him daily. If you'll do that, you can move from this to this. What are you today? Are you a lighter or are you a 
porch. A torch. You see, the heat is hot. It's about the same as the lighter, but there's more force behind it. Watch this. There's more force behind it. There's power behind it. It's not easily blown out. Blow. It won't go out. Why? Because there is force behind it. This is a Christian who doesn't allow outside forces and circumstances to extinguish their flame. I don't know about you. I've been both. There have been times in my life, there have been times in my life, man, I've been weak and I've just been nothing more than a lighter. Circumstances come my way. Temptations come my way. I'm not in the Word. I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm not faithful to God as I need to be. My prayer life is suffering. But there have been other times Well, man, I'm living for Jesus. I've got everything going. I'm walking with Him. I'm talking with Him. Temptation comes my way, and and I just, come on. You know what I'm talking about. You just slap the old devil around a little bit because you are walking with Jesus. I began to think about that, and you know who came to my mind? The Apostle Paul. You see, the Apostle Paul was a torch. Man, he was a torch. There are some characteristics in Paul's life that demonstrate this. Number one, I think he was a man of humility. He was a man of humility. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. 1 Timothy 1 verse 15, the Bible says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Maybe the greatest Christian that has ever lived. Here's the Apostle Paul saying, hey, I'm nothing without Jesus. We need to come to that place. When we began to think that we have arrived, we began, listen, we are nothing more than a Pharisee. When we think, listen, we don't need God. I've got this thing conquered. I've got this Christian life conquered. I can withstand temptation all by myself. Man, that's when pride enters in, and that's when we began to fall. The Apostle Paul, the great man of God that he was, he was humble. He knew it wasn't him, but it was God who lived through him. But also he was courageous. He had courage, Acts chapter 18 and verse 9. Acts 18 and verse 9. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. Do not be afraid. You know the message, one of the main messages of Christmas is don't be afraid. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. And then the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul was humble, but Paul was courageous. And then Paul was persistent. I love this. Watch this. He was persistent. No matter what came Paul's way, he was persistent. He didn't get knocked down. He didn't get blown out. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11.23-28, through 28, it says, Are Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. Verse 26, I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and I've told and I have often gone without sleep. I have no- Known hunger and thirst, and I have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all of 
the churches. What's the point? Man, sometimes we get a flat tire. God, I quit. A flat tire. We go shopping and we get there at 9.55 and the place doesn't open till 10. And we're mad because they don't open five minutes early. Dollar General at three-way closed five minutes before it was closing time. God! Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You get stuck. I've never seen traffic. I don't know where people are coming from here lately in Jackson, Tennessee. I mean, the traffic has been just horrendous. It's crazy. God, why? And then you look at Paul's life. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You look at Paul, that dude's been beaten and shipwrecked and bitten by snakes and, 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 and stabbed in the back by other religious people, Pharisees. We get sick with a little sniffle of cold. God, why did you allow me to get a cold? It's so close to Christmas. God, why? And we get so mad, and then we thought, well, this Christian life, it's not worth it. I'm quitting. Wah, 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 wah. Man, we're babies sometimes, aren't we? Man, you couldn't, bl you couldn't blow the flame of Paul had out. He was persistent. No matter what came his way, he was going to live for God. And so the question that I have for you today is this. As a Christian, as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus, are you a lighter? Oh, you're burning. You're a child of God. You're saved. You're going to heaven when you die. But when things come your way, Or you're a torch. Nothing's going to stop you. You can't be blown out. No matter what. Listen to me. No matter what, you're going to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Which one are you? There's a third group of people in this place. Oh, look at that. Two in one. Bam. Two stuck together. Thank you, Lord. That means something. I don't know what, but it means something. <laughs> Give me wisdom and discernment, Lord Jesus. That's got to be something good. I don't know what it is. It's two stuck together. It means the fire alarm's going to go off. Let me break them apart. The third thing is the match. Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. John answered them all, I baptize you with water. But one will, but one who is more powerful than I, told my Jesus, will come. The straps of those whose hand of sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. You see, the match, watch this, this is interesting. The match. There's no flame. There's no power source. There's no butane. There's no propane. There's, no, there's nothing in the tank. There's no gas. There's no fuel. But this match has the opportunity to be used greatly, but it cannot be used until there's a strike. Until you take the match and you strike it on the striking surface that consists of sand, powdered glass, and a chemical called red phosphate. When you take this nothing, no power source, and then you begin to strike it, connect it, contact it with the red phosphorus and the, the sand and the powdered glass, bam! It becomes lit. Lit. Does anybody else love the smell of a match? Man, I love the smell. That's weird. I love it. 
What does this match represent? Here it is. This match represents people that do not yet know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They've yet to be ignited. They've, they, 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 they've yet to be lit. They have potential. If you are a creation of God, you have potential. If you are a creation of God, doesn't make you a child of God, but if you are a creation of God, you have potential purpose. But before you can live in that potential purpose, you must be first of all lit. To be lit, you have to come in contact with Jesus. Come on, somebody. Before you can be lit, you've got to come in contact with Jesus. And once you are, then, my friend, you have become lit for all eternity. I never will forget, at 16 years of age, in Milan, Tennessee, I was nothing more than a religious person. I was a match. I had no power source. This is what I was. But then on that day in October of 1983, I came in contact with the Savior. Bam! And from that day on, ladies and gentlemen, I have been lit by the power of God. And the question that I have for you today is, which one of these are you? As we close, which one of these are you? Are you a lighter? It's a slow burning flame that can be blown out. Are you a torch like the Apostle Paul? Come hell or high water, I will live for Jesus. Good luck blowing me out, devil, because it ain't going to happen. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm talking with Jesus. I'm living for Jesus. I'm in the Word. I'm spending time in prayer. I'm in church. I'm building up my life in you. Good luck, devil. You're not going to blow me out. I'm a torch for the kingdom of God. Which one are you? Or are you here today? In your match, you've not yet, not yet come in contact, not with red phosphorus, but with the blood of Jesus. You've not yet come in contact with Christ. I'm here to tell you today, if you are a match, you've never given your life to Jesus. Today could be the day where you come alive in Christ. Today could be the day that you begin to get lit. Today could be the day when the Spirit of God comes and lives inside of you. Today can be the best day of your life, but you've got to come in contact with Jesus. You've got to say, hey Jesus, Jesus, I'm giving you my life. And the Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. If you call upon the name of the Lord, if you come in contact with Jesus, you will be saved. Lit for all eternity. Wouldn't you like to do that today? Wouldn't you like to do that? There's no better time during the Christ, than the Christmas season to invite the light of this world. The light of this world. John 8, 12. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and 3. Jesus is the light that is born on Christmas morning. I don't know about you. I, I sure wouldn't want to leave this place. Just this. No, 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 no. I want to leave this place burning on fire for God. I wouldn't want to leave this place today as this. Where winds come and they blow and the storms come and they blow. The circumstances come and they blow. The temptations come and they blow. <sighs> no. I 
I want to be a torch for God. There's a torch living inside of every child of God. It's called the Holy Spirit. Let him go. Let him light your life so that you can be a light for somebody else around you. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes.